episode of the Ever Black Podcast is brought to you by Death Wish Hot Rods and Customs. Check out their Instagram for all their new t-shirts, caps, beanies, cups, and the all-new Atomic Death lineup. Nikki, thanks for joining us on the show, brother. Uh, how's everything going over there in LA? Are you in LA? Yeah, in LA. Um, pretty good. I mean, well, you know, covid but COVID-y. we're all kind of used to that at this point, I guess. So, yeah. yeah. It's about the same as it has been. Um, you know, COVID, hanging out. We're finally putting out the album soon, so I'm really excited about that. And um, then I'm sure we'll start touring again this year, assuming there's not like a, a newer, even more deadly strain that comes along or something. So <laughs> Let's hope not, because I keep hearing shit all the time. Even down here, they open the floodgates and it's like, is the new one, is your new favorite friend. Everything is, right. and you're like, oh, cool, cool. What's what's next? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're in Australia. Yeah, how, how bad yeah. is how bad was the COVID? I know in New Zealand they they contained it pretty well, at least in the beginning. Yeah, is that how was yeah. that in Australia? Where, where I am in Queensland. I know. Have you ever been to Australia? No, I did go to New Zealand once, but never Australia yet. Oh, okay, yeah, it's it's just a little rowboat ride across the road. Um, but where I am, they we were like a escape from New York where everything was like shut off. And then over Christmas, they're like, oh, we're all good now. So let's uh, let everyone in. And then it's just it's just gone crazy. It seemed so. to happen everywhere. It's kind of like, why do you even bother with all this shit in the first place? If you, it's like, oh, just kidding. We're not going to do that again. <laughs> yes. so it's like, what the fuck, you know? Like, <laughs> I guess nobody knew what to do, but still, it's kind of ridiculous. I know. I know. It's, it's crazy. But hey, man, as you mentioned before, the new Necrogoblicon album, The Fundamentals. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Let me start that again. It's early here. Uh, yeah, Fundamental right. Slimes and Humors is out on April 1st, and I've heard it, and I love the fuck out of it. Uh, but dropping it on April Fool's Day, I'd be tempted to, like, drop the album cover, but with a whole bunch of fart noises. So everyone's, like, all excited. And they, <laughs> to it, they go, what? And then you drop the real yeah. version at midday. That but, would be a great idea. I'd you know, Alex chose the release date. Um, <laughs> I feel like he did it to fuck with people a little bit, but uh, as far as I know, it's just totally legit, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I'm sure it is. That, that's why people don't take business advice from me down here. Like, they go, no, that's a <laughs> yeah, terrible a good idea. idea though. You send out all the vinyls. It's just like fart noises. Fart noises. Like, it's the most expensive prank ever, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. oh <laughs> mate. It, it would be hilarious, but uh, very pitchforky. And, uh, you know, you know, what? if we were like huge band, that would be maybe someday we can do that. So I'll keep it in mind. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> uh, there you go. There you go. And then you can be, when it when it all goes to shit, you'd be like that guy in Australia. Yeah, go get him. That's his idea. Yeah. 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 All works out. Nav, right? <laughs> yeah, that's it. You've got that on the. On the, on the board, ready to it's go. It's on. I checked it earlier, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but all seriousness, though, it's a great record, man. And it's been four years since Welcome to Bonkers came out. And obviously, you know, a shit ton of stuff has, has happened since then. Uh, you know, in between, you know, like touring and, and that thing that stopped everything. Um, when did you guys start actually working on, on this one? Um, we started working on it pretty much like... I want to say 2018. So, so bonkers came out, I guess. Yeah. I don't even March, 2017 or something like that. Maybe March or April. Or... I, can't so, I think it's one of those. Let's say March or April. <laughs> and then um, we did a bunch of touring and stuff. And then we were doing this like a uh, final warp tour. I don't know if you ever heard of the warp tour, but it was like a big yeah. Yeah. traveling tour in the U S that would happen throughout like the nineties and most of the two thousands. And uh, we had it, now it's just, it's just like uh now it's just a festival it's no longer a traveling festival or whatever but um we were on the last kind of one that did the whole cross country thing and i remember uh starting on actually this is it which at the time was just called parpoons so yeah still getting used to you know when you get the final title it takes a little while to get used to it um <laughs> so that riff like 
you know the main baroque riff that that ended up being the chorus in that song um yeah yeah i wrote that on the, the tour bus for for warp tour and um there wasn't it wasn't like i sat down and wrote all of it it's like that riff was there and that song was there and then over the next three years uh was writing a lot of stuff and then some of it got thrown away some of it was written as recently as like 2020 you know oh wow but um yeah it was pretty much like working on stuff that whole time maybe there was like a month off here and there but not necessarily like 40 hour weeks you know because i like to go with the inspiration but um it was like a long and grueling process and the way we recorded was crazy like we did we did it we did drums last you know what i mean oh wow so, so we we had a lot of stuff done this is like partially done then uh okay let's get drums and well, we did i mean we drums slash vocals last it was actually a kind of cool way to work you know so I think we started recording like we had this is it a lot of it recorded at the same time we recorded the uh, system of a down cover oh well it's, it's even hard to remember like because this whole couple of years has been so <laughs> fucked but <laughs> i think it was like january 2019 when we recorded that that track and then we were just kind of back and forth because our uh, guy who records us lives in florida and we're on the west coast you know so every few months i'd just be like okay i'm going there for a couple of weeks coming back and Man. It was pretty sweet. But it came out awesome. You know, Thank I think, you. yeah. I'm really happy with it. It was, it was, a, it was a fun process. And yeah, I think, you know, kind of doing it that way, even though I think it was a pain in the ass for Jason, uh, the producer, uh, to do the drums last. I, I was pretty stoked because it allowed me to kind of make last minute changes. You know, if the drums are all done, everything's locked in. But if you still have to record drums, you can basically change it still up until the last second. So. Did you just have like uh, standing drums, like um, MIDI? Yeah, just or... like MIDI drums. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, uh, just, that's still yeah. so crazy though. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> but I mean, it was like super fucking. I don't know, piecemeal, not piecemeal, but you know, backwards. We did backwards, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're we're, <laughs> we're kind of doing that now, but uh, yeah, it's good times. Good times, but I mean, life and death seem to be a big part of the theme of this one, especially. I mean, it's a really fun album, but lyrically, it feels like it's a bit darker than you know the rest. Is that a result of the last couple of years and everything that's gone on, or am I just? You know, I don't know. Um, it's hard to say. I I was thinking about that recently, and you know, back in the day, we were just writing shit about goblins killing humanity. Um, so you could definitely say there's it was always misanthropic, you know what I mean? Hmm. Um, it was it was always somewhat about like an outsider's perspective and this hatred of humanity. <laughs> but um, when, after a certain point, you, you know, you can't get bored writing everything just like the, the goblins punch the priest or the goblins eat the baby or whatever the goblins are going to do that time. And so I think that sort of started um, bonkers too. There was a lot of kind of dark stuff darkness the song and um i honestly i couldn't tell you man it's just just like i just write it out kind of stream of consciousness a lot of times so whatever i was going through i'm okay though you know <laughs> that's good that's good but i mean that's all darkness i mean it's got a bit of a positive oh just the vibe yeah you know in the sense you know it's like a bit of true yeah the... but you know but i mean there's the there's also the, like the track is it carousels on this one mm. as well. That one seems yeah. like, uh, look, you can correct me if I'm wrong. You go, eh, wrong, dickhead. And I'll go, okay, no worries. That's if I'm wrong. If I've, if I've listened to the album quite a few times, and this is my interpretation. So if I'm wrong, feel free to correct me. Um, okay. It's open to so, interpretation. There's no <laughs> all right. Hitters, so yeah. Carousel seems like it's about growing up and how good we had it when we were young. And compared <laughs> to now. No, wrong. Oh, okay. No, you're right. You're right. It's definitely about the strength of nostalgia and like kind of the shittiness of being an adult in some ways and finding yourself in these like spirals of just like, what the fuck? And uh, I still remember how things used to be. So mm. you're right on that. Yeah. Oh, cool. I'm glad sure. I can see. I got that right. I get a Yeah, you got it. You, you got, got a banana stick. <laughs> but see, I mean, that's, that's why, you know, I relate to that song, but I, I collect action figures and stuff to, I'm that 40 year old. You're you, man. You know, I know what you're trying to keep myself remembering those while I pay all those bills. Um, Yin, 
<laughs> Yin is also a really good track. That's yes. going to be fucking awesome live. I think it's, yeah, it's definitely like just like a cocaine fuel <laughs> romp. Fucking, ah! Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like, it's, uh, that one live. Who's, who's Yin? What is Yin you? is, you know, there's Yin and there's Yang, right? Ah. <laughs> I was looking in, into it and um, I found some websites. I'm like, which one's the negative one? I looked into it and there's yin. It's generally construed as more negative, like effeminate. There's a lot of qualities that, that go along with yin and yang. Yeah. And so I was kind of thinking like, you know what? Yin. It's not strictly just negative, you know, but from the perspective of the song, you could look at it that way. It's going to sound cool with a million people just yelling out. My son thought that was the greatest thing in the world. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I, he's got a real like motorcycle feel or something. I yeah. Know. He's in the backseat of the car just going. Rah! And I'm like, nah, yeah. yeah. Well, all everyone's awesome. driving past us going, what the fuck? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean, the, the this album's got so many great little moments too. Like, I, this is kind of a spoiler, but that uh, was it the the Weezer nod in Fancy Wind. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come on, mate. No idea. Yeah. Oh, mate. Yeah, no. That's that. I was at work. Yeah, <laughs> I was at work. Got something in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I like, I was listening to it in my headphones while I'm working, and I just started like laughing out loud, and everyone just yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh, just. But I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. Like it took me by surprise, and that's something you all, you guys have always been really good at, is just throwing little bits and pieces in to take uh, fans by surprise. Yeah. Take the edge off a little, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. But uh, I won't say any more. You got to listen to the track, kids. That's um, cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I mean, vocally, it's it's incredible too. I mean, there's uh, what was it uh, lesson in hate, where it's like you've got all those vocal layers and all the the range. A lot That's of incredible, dude. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Yeah, that one. I tried a lot of new vocal styles on this album, you know. Um, that yeah. I haven't really played with before, and that was it's gonna be really challenging to perform live <laughs> for me. You know, I feel like it's gonna be a little easier for some of the other guys, but for me, it's gonna be like 50 times harder. Um, so I, I'm like kind of gearing up for that, um, getting ready, and uh, yeah, I really wanted to like I wanted to put out some stuff that still you know has harsh vocals, mm. has clean stuff, but not 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 like really like auto tune clean kind of stuff, you know, just kind of more classic metal, I guess. I don't know how to describe it because it's myself, but you know what I'm saying? Like, ah! As opposed to like, ah! Yeah, um, yeah, I get it. No, it's awesome. And then, yeah, in terms of, I, I didn't want to like let down the fans of the brutal stuff too, you know, and then not, there's some punk yelling, there's hardcore stuff like right now and, so yeah, I really wanted to like get the vocals all over the place. And, and part of that too, honestly, is because people hear growls and death metal and they're instantly like, no, I don't like it. I don't like the vocals. Like, and it's like, well, you can still make heavy music without necessarily alienating quite as many people. Yeah, um, but you've, you've, like I my mom you've likes that. this album. I think it's the first one she actually enjoyed, you know what really? I mean? Really? So, yeah, I was I was proud of that. Oh, that's cool. So did yeah. you did you give her a copy on, on, uh, on not well we don't have any physical copies yet, but I will. I gave her a link, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's really, yeah. really cool. Did she say what her favorite was? Um, I think she, at the time she said her favorite was no such thing as a key. Oh, I like that uh, one. The last one, yeah. yeah. It's real deep. Yeah, that one's very, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. I like that a lot. That's a good closer. That's a really Thanks, good closer. Yeah, Alex was like, that's got to be the closer. And I'm like, fuck, man. I'm so over that song. But looks like he was right. So, hey. <laughs> and I mean, the uh, artwork is pretty wild, too, with the anatomy of the goblin. With, oh, right. uh, yeah, dude, I, I, I zoomed in and there's so much stuff going on. Like you've got uh, like Jerry on the brain. There's like the yeah. egg. There's it's the skull in the balls. For- <laughs> definitely made for a 12 inch <laughs> format you know what i mean it's, it's like a yeah we've always or i've always been really into like hidden pictures like on every album waldo the, remember the very first album i don't know if you ever saw the cover but it's like this goofy cartoon thing yeah, us yeah. running away from valvolins and them 
one of the goblins in there is a Waldo goblin. Like he's got the Waldo suit, you know? Do you know Waldo? Oh, I know Waldo, but he's called so, Wally down here. Okay, so there's like a Wally goblin then, I guess, hidden on every... Oh, dude, record. now I've got to go back and have a look. There's is one, that... and I don't remember where it is, but it's there on the cover of uh, Slimes and Humors too. Knudsen promised it's in there, so it's it's there. And so I, the only one that's not in the cover of, I think, is... is meta actually maybe power too but it's definitely hidden in all the like liner notes on everything we've done so that's always know. pretty fun and gonna, yeah yeah because that's bonkers. the same thing we did our art for uh welcome to bonkers too so he's just like super versatile you know oh it's insane because that cover that's what i was gonna say bonkers is so much I, like when i zoom in on that there's still things i find like i don't yeah know. and the wall doesn't wall he's in there too so yeah oh that's gonna drive me nuts <laughs> <laughs> on the i can't see the sailboat guy so i'll be um i'll be definitely looking for that and there's skulls in the balls too what's what's up with that <laughs> um well you know we, we were just like let's get creative what is the goblin anatomy really like it was essentially like i had the idea for like because here we spell humors h-u-m-o-r-s but i wanted it to be spelled the british way which maybe is how you spell it there too um which obviously it's like a play on words because I want it to be like, you know, back in the day, it's like the four humors are what comprise the body. And like, that's what people thought back in like medieval anatomy and stuff like, oh, biles and humors. And, you know, you have an imbalance of the humor. So we need to bleed you and shit like that. <laughs> so um, from that perspective, it was about like, let's find this. Uh, let's try and make it look like a, a medieval medical chart, basically, um, because that's like the play on the word humors. Um, yes. And then Knudsen, the artist, we were like, hey, man, just just like seriously go nuts as many like little hidden details as you can. And he loves doing that kind of stuff. So it's really it's like the perfect guy to, to do that. You know? Oh, man, I, I can't wait to get a vinyl. I can't wait to get it on vinyl. Oh, me too, actually. Yeah. Man, <laughs> I want bonkers on vinyl, too. I don't have any of your stuff because we we are in the arse end of the world here, my friend. It's, it's probably pretty expensive to get imports over there, huh? Yeah, but that's all right. I'm gonna get this this new one and just sneak. Well, in. hopefully, we'll be coming to Australia in some time. And I know we were like gearing up to like head that way right before the pandemic hit, and what? then that obviously, yeah, there was like some sort of offer I think on the table, and then it was like, well, we'll figure that out in a couple of years or whatever. Um, so it's definitely like in our plans to to get down under, you know, and and. uh I, I've always wanted to visit Australia too. So, I mean, as soon as we can be there, we will. And we'll make sure to bring some stuff. Like yeah, man. Stuff. Cause I was actually going to hit you up and go, how much to get you guys on a plane to get down to Australia. Cause like, I would love to see you guys down here. Cause that would be, yeah. You know. I mean, but if someone's already got that covered. So, yeah. Someone's working on it. It's not, there's nothing set in stone right now, but it's like mm. certainly something we're working on. Definitely want to do so. That's and we'll do funny. the usual like, hit the cities around, I guess, because there's like not too much in the middle, right? Nah, it's just dirt. Yeah. Just right. dirt. And things just that'll kill you. Out back. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's Hold it. The, <laughs> uh, have, have you got a couple more minutes? Yeah, totally. Yeah, awesome. Because yeah. we're going to get deep, mate. We're going to get right. All deep. right. We're going to get into it. Uh, I want to know, what planet do the goblins come from? Um, well, they actually, the planet I believe is called Goblin Island. Yes. According, according to the lore. Yes. So Goblin Island was just a whole planet essentially. Ah, okay. Just where uh, a magical island in outer space, you know, that whole yeah. <laughs> my space <laughs> days. Um, and the, we never thought of a name for it beyond just Goblin Island. So I have to say the whole planet is called Goblin Island. Goblin Island, but it's a planet. Okay, because I thought it was like a, a an island on a planet. Well, I think it, you know, there's islands all over the planet. Okay. You know, so it's like a full archipelago of Goblin Islands. But, you know, they just refer to it as Goblin Island. That's okay. That answers the question. Goblin Island. Yeah. There you go. I, I, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, have you ever thought of, uh, you know, digging uh, deeper into John's backstory? You know what I mean? Like I thought like making a movie that, you know, goes, goes into maybe a cross between a road oh, yeah. movie. 
I, we've certainly like thought about it and talked about it and stuff. And the guy who, uh, Brandon Dermer direct, directs most of our music videos. He's, he's always working on some stuff for John Gallicon, but you know, nothing set in stone yet or anything like that. But hopefully in the future, we can get a lot more of the uh, burning John Gallicon questions answered. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, I listened to the audio book and um, I was like, I wanted to, you know, it was, it was inspiring, but I wanted That's to, I wanted, funny, to, right? yeah. I wanted like to know, I wanted to, I wanted to hear, you, you know, know, goblin uh, stuff. Yeah. More goblin stuff. I think, you know, that'd be kind of cool. And you know, do you call them goblets? <laughs> Gob- Female goblins? Yeah. We- I know. I, I haven't thought of it. I haven't thought about their, uh, uh, their gender relations really i guess uh, i just assumed they were goblins but goblets maybe they're you know it's kind of old school in that way you know yeah you know goblesses yeah you know? goblet yeah see i think <laughs> uh, this is the shit that keeps me up at night and and my wife's Slider. like what do they call female goblins <laughs> what do they call a female goblin my wife's like it's two o'clock in the morning and i'm like what do they call a female goblin she's like shut the fuck up go to sleep um but uh I always yeah. thought there should be like red goblins and purple goblins too, you know, and sort of mm. be like kind of the races or whatever, you know. So I was thinking about that too. Someone get you for that. Netflix money and make this happen because I would love to see this. I I would, man. I know, and I, I almost think you know John Goblicon's one thing, but there's all these other goblins too. So I mean, it, it doesn't have to be John. I think he sort mm. of was an outcast from his own species in the in that sense um so <laughs> i love it <laughs> part of this lore we, i don't think this is ever going to go anywhere but like okay so he's flying a spaceship right and he crash lands on earth and the goblins like don't want him back basically so that's how he ended up on earth basically you know what i mean so in terms of you know yeah there could be a lot of shit there honestly I yeah mean, and i think know. that's going to be canon now because everyone's going to watch these it's come from you this album's very uh <laughs> <laughs> this is you know not a lot of goblin lore on this album you could say right. but uh there's always room in the future for more concept albums and stuff like that <laughs> it's true but you know that's a i i do love this album because i mean it's it's you know it's got the the vibe but it's it's well, a lot vibe, deeper. yeah but it's and i mean it's always, goblin. it's always goblin it's always goblins we need yeah. goblins we need goblins down in australia as you mentioned before do you know much about australia what do you know about australia I don't know a, a shit ton. I know that, you know, you like uh, Marmite, Vegemite, kangaroos, emus, uh, crazy bugs, crocodiles, sharks, cities on the coast, uh, hmm. surfing, um, a lot of uh, crazy right wingers. Um, hmm. uh, uh, sex, people like sex. Uh, yeah. These are things I've seen on, on <laughs> internet articles about Australia, so I don't know. Yeah, um, it's crazy. Yeah, it's you know. Yeah, I think you you'll enjoy it when you come down here. Except for the drop bears. Except for what? Drop bears. What's that? You don't. You've never heard of a drop bear. No. And dude, like drop bear. Drop bear. Drop bear. Not beer. Not a drop beer. Drop bear. Drop bear. As drop in bear. a bear, because they they're furry and they live in the tree. They kind of look kind of cute from a from a. Don't you Google it. You can ruin my I'm Googling it. Yeah. <laughs> but drop bears. Oh, man, look at that. Yeah, it'll drop down from the tree and it latches on and you just you can't get them off, man. And it's like an evil koala, basically. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, yep, yeah. riddled with chlamydia. Uh-oh. Um, well, so we'll just avoid the drop bear territories, you know, or get like a big hat, like a, a metal umbrella hat thing. See? There you go. So that's one thing you got to look out for. Drop bears. Wow. Yes. I never knew. That's a whole new whole new thing in my mind you know? we'll look after you mate we'll we'll, we'll protect you <laughs> drop bear. Yeah. Drop I thought you, yeah. at first i thought you said drop beer i was like is that like a beer you drop into another beer or something <laughs> no no but i i have i have two that i had the other night that i haven't taken away so that's kind of like dropping a beer there yeah you that's almost a drop beer there yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's our accent we sound like a four-wheel drive being backed into a tree <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then uh, everyone's like, what, what the oh, fuck? AC, DC. Yeah. Oh, ACDC. We yeah. call them Akadaka down here. Akadaka, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like a national treasure for Australia, huh? 
Yeah, we're pretty damn proud of them. Yeah, they everyone likes ACDC. And there was someone uh, I was listening to some other fucking band. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm blanking. I'd have to look. Um, some other Australian famous rock group. You know uh, that song? It was like a meme viral hit, the singing cowboy in the sky. Or oh, not Cold Chisel. You'd be There's, talking about Jimmy Barnes now. He is yeah. seen down here as like a national treasure, but I'm going to go on record and say, I'm not really a fan. Okay. Cause and I was listening gonna... to some of his, uh, his band or whatever when I was getting into it a few weeks mm-hmm. back. Yeah. Um, I mean, people love it. People love it down here. Now I'm going to have people banging at my door going, how dare you, mate? Cold yeah. chisel, right? Yeah. 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 That's yeah. who I was checking out. So this, yeah, but you're not the biggest fan. So no, 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 talk no. about Fonzie, Fonzie and all that. I'm not a, I'm not a fan. Now I'm going to have all the Aussies on my, you know, going, <laughs> 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 who the fuck, mate? Toss and drop bears in your window. That's it, there. eh? Right in my face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, you're, uh, as I mentioned before, me and my son driving around, Necro, we listen to Necrogoblicon all the time. Like, that's how we bond. Um, it's, you know, it's very, very, very special to us. And I told him, I said, I'll be talking to you and he's five. And he was like, Like, ah, I'm glad to hear that, man. He was so excited. Like, you know, magic spiders, the, the way in for these kids. Oh yeah. It's, it's, you know, start them young indoctrination really. Yeah. Yeah. And now he's running around going dressed as goblins and, (laughs) you know, and we sing goblins together, you know, and and I guess you hear stories like this from all over the world now, how like, it's not just, it's bigger than the band itself now. Like it's bringing people together, bringing families together and and bonding over it. I mean, how does, how's that make you feel? Um, It's kind of surreal, honestly, because, you know, I'm just sitting here in in a room by myself in a, in a different part of the world. And, to think that, you know, I can sit here and obsess and drive myself crazy and work on these things and all the emotions that go with writing and stuff. And then when you hear stuff like that, it's like pretty validating, to be honest, just to know that people are actually listening to, you know, the stuff that I poured my time and mm. soul into um, and other other dudes, too. Um, and it's just. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's awesome. You know, sometimes when we'd be on tour there, you get people in their sixties, seventies, you get little kids coming up and they're all stoked. And I'm like, this is awesome. You know, it's really cool to be a part of something that can appeal to like a broader range of people, I guess, you know? And, um, I'm just like, you know, just thankful, I guess that that's like happening and that's out there. Um, and it's pretty sweet it's a little overwhelming and hard to like fathom too, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like for all, you know, someone's out there listening to Necro right now. And I'm just like, Oh, like, I don't want to hear any more Necro for a year. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's awesome. yeah. It's, it's pretty special, man. I'm hoping that, you know, when you tour, I'll be able to like uh, put him on my shoulders with a big trench coat. A little Hell yeah, hat, man. You know what I mean? And then we can yeah, just kind of, yeah. You know, it's all ages shows are not a thing in, in Australia. Sometimes, sometimes, but he's really young. So usually they've got that cap. So I'm just going to make blast. myself. Hmm. Do want to blast little child ears with, with heavy metal? You can get some good earplugs. So sometimes we'll see a little kid and they've got like the, the gardening earmuffs. Yep, on. yep, yep, yep. I'll get him those. But he, yeah. he would absolutely love that, mate. I'll bring That'd him. And awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Huxley. Oh, yeah, Huxley. Yeah, boy. Yeah, we'll get all, uh, all his autographs and all that too. So. <laughs> oh, he, he'd be like, "What?" Like, he loves it. He frots it. But um, I know you got a bunch of uh, European stuff coming up. Uh, what else are you guys having coming up in the future? What's, what's um, happening? It's a, we've been working on booking a U.S. tour to like sort of be like the uh, the Slimes and Humors album tour. Hmm. That'll be U.S. Maybe some Canada. I'm not really sure yet. And then yeah, we've got those the zero festivals coming up, which were most of those were like rescheduled from two years ago, right when the pandemic started. So it's actually kind of good, I guess, because now we have a new album coming out too. Um, so yeah, that's, I'm overwhelmed and excited about that considering we haven't played a show in like at least a couple of years <laughs> and then we're going to be like, all right, back to playing shows. Here's a huge festival. You know what I mean? Um, but we should have a, a tour here 
before that. So that can be kind of like a getting back into it thing. Um, and then I guess the rest is sort of open-ended right now, but we're definitely looking at, you know, we're kind of testing the waters with, with the state of the world and stuff, but once things are all okay or however okay they're going to get, then we'll definitely be back out there and uh, whatever comes our way, basically. Oh, man. And then Australia. We got to go to Australia, man. It's on the, it's on my bucket list for sure. So, I mean, yeah, <laughs> man, I, I will throw my cash. All, all right. the, oh, you can have all my, I'll just throw it all at you. I was, <laughs> I was talking to the boys in my band last night going, these guys have to tour here. Uh, who's got some money? <laughs> <Let's>, <laughs> and they're like, we're musicians, man. We've got no money. I'm like, Fuck. but um, yeah, yeah, exactly. But, yeah, <laughs> I promise we'll make it out there. I don't know when. <laughs> It'll be a good time. It'll be a good time. But until then, Nikki, it's been great hanging out with you, man. The new Necrogoblicon album, The Fundamental Slimes and Humors, is out on April 1st. The real version, not the fart version. Um, take care <laughs> of yourself, man. And uh, yeah. hey, all the best to you and the boys, huh? Likewise. Cheers, man. And um, I hope <laughs> you soon. <laughs>